Good morning and welcome to worship this morning on this fourth Sunday of Easter, the Sunday that we typically call the Good Shepherd Sunday. We invite you to join in in worship by uh, following the words in the bold print and joining with those. But before we start this morning, we want to acknowledge all of our May birthdays. We have a lot of them here in our Trinity family this month. But we want to specifically shout out to Braden Wiseman Bell because he turns 13 tomorrow the 4th and to Marge Crosby who has a big 8-0 birthday. Mm -hmm. So happy birthday to all of you, especially, especially Braden and Marge. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Christian friends. Happy birthday to you. And many more. <clears throat> Let us begin worship with the call to worship. We gather together to worship God, the shepherd of our souls, the one who has created us, who sustains us, who redeems us, who walks beside us in good times and bad, and who calls us to follow. This is our God. Let's worship him together. Let's join together in singing, Savior like a shepherd lead us. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name, and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice, that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts, the second chapter. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us join together and read responsibly Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from 1 Peter, the second chapter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. 
So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. When I was teaching preschool, one of my favorite activities to do with my students was to act out the song, We're Going on a Bear Hunt. In this song, we would run into a whole bunch of obstacles, a field of tall grass, a river, a tree. And for each obstacle, we shouted, you can't go over it, you can't go under it, you can't go around it, we have to go through it. Today in our Gospel reading, Jesus tells us that we can only enter the sheepfold by the gate and no other way. You can't go over it, you can't go under it, you can't go around it, you have to go through it. Oh, and by the way, that gate is actually Jesus. Jesus as a gate is a bit of a peculiar image. So often we think of the gate as that which keeps others out, that which stops others from intruding on our space, on our property. That doesn't sound much like Jesus. Sadly, for too long, the church has used this text as a way to exclude, setting themselves as the gatekeeper for Jesus pushing away those that they decided are undesirable, unorthodox, those viewed as sinful or less than. But gates serve a bigger purpose than keeping others out. Gates also serve to let people in. They are the point of welcome, welcoming others into our space, welcoming them in with us to a place of safety and belonging. And then, when the time comes, the gate opens once again to send us back out into the world. Martin Laird in Into the Silent Land shares the story of walking across a moor with a friend who had four dogs. As they walked, three of the dogs would run out across the moor, leaping over creeks and chasing rabbits and joyfully exploring their environment. But one of the dogs would only run in a small circle right in front of his owner. No matter how many miles they walked or how far the other dogs went, this dog would only run in a tight circle very close to them. Laird asked him why, and he replied, this dog was kept for his entire life prior to coming to me in a very small cage. His body has left the cage, but his mind still carries it with him. For him, the world outside the cage does not exist, and so no matter how big or how beautiful the moor, he will never run across it. I bring him here so he can breathe the fresh air, but he's still running circles in his cage. If we come into the safety of the fence but never leave, we become like the dog running small circles in an open field, unable to see the beauty and adventure of the wider world. The gate is meant to let us back out. The gate is a tool of liberation and freedom. It invites us in and then sends us on our way. When Jesus says, I am the gate, he is inviting us in and sending us out. 
inviting us into his love, grace, and forgiveness, then sending us back out to share that love, grace, and forgiveness with a world who needs it. When we gather for worship, we enter the doors of this space to a place where we know we are loved, accepted, protected, and at home. A place where we will be fed and nourished at the table. And then we are sent out, being commissioned, go in peace, serve the Lord. We are sent back out to tell of the miraculous gift we have been given in Jesus, to share the love we have experienced in this place. This is part of what is so hard in these COVID-19 days. We long to walk through these church doors, to be together in this place, to sing and share, to confess and be forgiven, to hear the word of God proclaimed and to be fed at the table, to be present in this space of freedom and love so that we can re-enter the world feeling more whole and filled. This virus feels like it has locked the gate. We can't come in, nor can we go out. But today we are reminded that as Jesus' beloved people, we aren't bound by buildings and doors, by literal fences and gates. Jesus is the gate, a gate with arms stretched wide open in love and welcome. This virus has shaken up our way of being church, has forced us to think creatively and deeply about how to be the church from afar, how to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in new and creative ways. We are reminded that the church was never about the building. It was always about the people. As Trinity, we have reached our arms wider and broader to our community, welcoming in any and everyone who crosses our digital path. On some Sundays, more than three times our average worship attendance tunes in for all or part of our online worship services. People from near and far are joining us to worship and praise our God. Members of our congregation are writing prayers to be shared daily, and they're being shared by other people and churches, reaching hundreds of folks. Bishop Regal of the West Virginia Western Maryland Synod recently shared a blog about a dream he had one night. He writes, It's four in the morning, and I've been up since 2.30, unable to get back to sleep, because the dream I had won't let me go. I'm not going into the details of the dream, but here's the upshot. I'm asking that we double our church attendance. He goes on to say, back in the 90s, I was told that the typical Lutheran invites someone to attend church with them once every 13 to 17 years. On the other hand, Another study said that 90% of all new Lutheran church members reported that the thing that got them in the door of their new Lutheran congregation was an invite from a parishioner. We have become welcoming, I believe, but we need to stop being a welcoming church and become an inviting church. See, you can only welcome those who walk onto your property. If you're not inviting them, the only way they're going to get on your property is by accidentally stumbling upon it. And given the locations of some of our congregations, that would most definitely have to be an accident. As a church, we've been forced to change the way we operate, to move so much of what we do online. We record our services hold meetings via video conference. We'll soon begin a book study online. And we also find ways to reach out to one another without the internet, as we make phone calls, mail cards, sermons, and bulletins. And our elementary Sunday school kids 
are receiving their lessons by mail to complete with their family. And with all this, evangelism has never been easier. It takes one click to share our prayers and worship services online for all of your followers and friends. You can easily forward the link to a service to a friend that might need to hear the good news. Or invite a friend who loves to read to enjoy our book study. You can simply pass on a fun Sunday school activity for another child to enjoy. It's as easy as passing on something that you read and enjoyed. Miss Carol has several times brightened my day by mailing a photocopy of devotions or comics that spoke to her with a note about what she loved about it. It has never been easier to reach out and connect with others, to share good news in a climate of so much bad news, to extend love and welcome to anyone who happens upon your social media, phone line, or mail delivery, to reconnect with folks who have slipped away from our community, and to lift up others in our community who may be struggling behind their closed gates. When we can finally meet together again for worship, learning, and fellowship, our doors will be wide open, ready to welcome all in, ready to gather at the table to taste the bread and wine of salvation, and then to send you back out to serve our great God. Amen. Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, 
He rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. Enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, and learning sites. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets, and for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety, illness, weakness, and overwhelmed in any kind of suffering. We pray for today for those on our prayer list and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work, food pantries, and feeding ministries in our congregation. May none of our neighbors lack for basic needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives of faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you, for your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love, for your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in great need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.